Hey guys, welcome back to another default cube CG matter tutorial and this whole not starting in the chair bit It's pretty stupid. Um, okay, so what, what do I want to talk about today? I think it's actually a pretty interesting topic. Well, let's hop into blender today I want to talk about this very seemingly simple physics problem where we have two rings and I'm trying to you know have one ring collide with the other in this way that makes sense the inspiration for this is josh contacted me a bit ago because he needed this kind of scenario for one of the models he was making and when he asked me uh what the issue with the physics were i was thinking to myself what in it no, I'm, I'm kidding i'm kidding um there's some issues with this scenario that don't make it obvious how to set this up and after like looking into it myself i thought you know what why not make this into a tutorial in full screen because i always forget okay so let's talk about this scenario which is whatever, and you can also use this to make chains. Let's just get into it. So I'm gonna start off with a new blunder scene and let's set up the situation. So we're looking for two objects that have holes in them. So we're not trying to collide two cubes, two prisms, two whatever, two objects with genus one. I think that's correct uh, for the topology folks out there. So torus is one way to do that. You could also do a coffee mug, you know, cause the handle has a hole, anything with a hole. Uh, we're going to take this, we're going to duplicate it along the x-axis and rotate it by 90 degrees so that one, you know, could fall onto the other. And normally the way we'd set this up if we want them to interact is we take our first object, go to um, rigid body. No, we go to physics, make it a rigid body, which will make uh, this fall but not interact with anything because the other one's not a rigid body. So to fix that, what do we do? Select the other one, make it a rigid body, and... At this point, those of you paying attention might notice, might uh, realize that they'd both fall at the same speed, uh, but there's actually an additional issue. If we click play, they explode away from each other, which might be what you want, but not what we want. And this is the issue Josh was running into. Okay, so before, before, what am I even saying? Let, let me explain what the issue with this is. So the reason this is happening, you might be thinking, oh, are the objects too close together or something like this? No. Blunder's physics isn't great, but it's not that bad. The issue is that when these these collisions are calculated, it's not actually seeing a torus and a torus. Because if it were, we, do, we wouldn't have this issue. What it's actually seeing is bounding boxes or maybe convex hulls. So for example, with this object, you're going to notice that the collision shape is set to convex hull, meaning that it's not actually seeing its torus. It's generating a new mesh, which it's using for the collision. Some more obvious ones are boxes. So here it would simulate two boxes colliding if we set both of these to box, which would still make them explode, but in a somewhat more organized way. You could also set these to something like cylinders, which would pretty closely approximate the mesh. Um, you, you have some other options. The, the, the point is there's nothing great for an object with a hole, right? So the trick is you need to set this to mesh, meaning it's going to actually use the mesh itself, all these vertices, faces, edges, to calculate the physics. And you, you might think, okay, well, we set both of these to mesh. Uh, why wouldn't Blender have that as the default option? The reason is it's very, very slow to calculate, at least compared to the others. A box is like the fastest thing you could do. Convex hull isn't the fastest, but it's a pretty good approach and it, and it uh, approximates the geometry of the object very well. A convex hull is just the shape uh, without any indenting, without any concave areas. It's convex, right? Okay, so we set both of these to mesh and you might think, okay, that works, but of course they're going to fall at the same speed, right? So really what we want is this object, this torus, to be stationary, but still reacting to physics and collisions and whatever uh, with this object, right? So we don't want this to be able to fall. There's a couple ways to do that. You could either set it to animated, which will keep it still. Why? Because we haven't animated it. So it's as if we, in some sense, have a keyframe to say, stay there, unless, you know, we add multiple keyframes and animate it, which we could do. We could add a keyframe, 30 frames down, move it, keyframe and it would look like this right and the physics still interact correctly uh, but that's what animated means let me just get rid of those not clean those keyframes but this is the hard the worst part about blenders you can't just grab those windows uh delete keyframes not animated uh your second option is just to set it to passive which uh, means it does exactly what you want it's not active in the sense that gravity is affecting it, affecting it but it's passive in that it still works with collisions but it doesn't move itself so we set it to passive and boom there you go if we did the opposite if we did the opposite where this one was passive what do you think would happen think about it this would happen okay 
So th that kind of solves the original issue, but you're going to notice with both of these cases, which, whichever one we set to passive, there's actually an issue that's much more sinister. It's darker. It's lurking underneath. And if we click play, you can see that the physics kind of react how you think, but the object's hovering. Why is it hovering? We, I thought we set it to mesh. I thought that meant that it's using the actual mesh, mesh geometry. It shouldn't have this like bounding box around it that's slightly bigger. So th this is the issue, and this was another thing that uh, Josh ran into that at the time I didn't even uh, really know how to solve. So that's the that's the goal here. So again, notice that with this case, our torus is still floating. What's happening here is called margin, or margining, or marginalizing. Probably not that one. Uh, it means that it gives it a bit of buffer room, a margin, and we can make that margin smaller so that there's less of a hover. But, of course, if you set your margin to zero, you're going to get some uh, bad physics. Uh, some stuff's going to start tearing apart. Um, so, with our uh, object in rigid body, you go to sensitivity, and you see the margin is right now set to 0.04. So there's going to be that much spacing twice, because we have two objects with the um, sensitivity 0.04. So let's just play this and see we have about an average distance of this, a bit of a gap. Let's try setting it to 0.01, so a quarter. Did I just type that wrong? Oh god, it just undid all my work. Th this is this is rough. Luckily, it's easy to set it up again. Um, so make sure to set both of these to mesh. This tutorial is a disaster. Uh, we're going to set this one to 0.01, and we're going to set this one also to 0.01. So now we expect the physics to be behaving pretty much the same, but with less of a gap. So let's see it. Yes, indeed, it is coming much, much closer to the geometry, and that's because we took the margin down in both cases. Now, you're going to see that there's some weird behavior, and that's just because Blender's physics is... There's no saving this one, honestly. <laughs> but um, maybe one day they'll change engines. But you can see that, that that's the compromise you have. The reason the margin exists is to add stability to the simulation. However, now objects aren't touching. So you can either try to keep bringing down the margin until you're fine with the mini, 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 minuscule gap. Another thing you can do, by the way, is if you go to the scene properties in rigid uh, body world, which is the settings for our physics, how many times is it calculating per frame? Uh, what are those calculations going to be like? Uh, we have all these settings here, so we could like bring up how many like steps there are per second, meaning that it's uh, going to be slower, but it's going to be more accurate. These are things you can play with, but generally, I feel like I've accomplished. <laughs> it keeps that's the thing with rigid bodies; it keeps on doing my thing, but. Uh, that's the thing I wanted to go over. I wanted to go over uh, the collision shape, like the, what bounding box you're choosing, and to make it mesh. And I wanted to talk about margins, and this is what's going to let you make those chain link fence... No, uh, those chains, just like metal chains or anything that intersects itself. I can't think of any other examples right now. But yeah, there you go. I hope you found this tutorial helpful, enjoyable, and if you want to support uh, this... Wait, let me... How am I going to be persuasive? Hold up. If you want to support um, my channel and feel like there's value in it and want to maybe even get benefits for yourself, Patreon is the best way to do that. Um, you can think of it as a donation or you can think of it as ways to get Discord access behind the scenes and now video courses if you're at a high enough tier that I do also publish on Gumroad. So check that out. It's the hole in the hand flush thing. Uh, that I've been releasing. It's a super cool thing. You could either get that on Gumroad or on Patreon uh, directly. But yeah, uh, whatever. If you want to do Patreon, you'll do it. Uh, if you're that kind of person, you would have already done it. Thank you for watching this free tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sorry there was so much rambling and undue messes, but um, happens, you know. <laughs>